Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and as already has been mentioned by the Member for Gloucester, I am uh, privileged to be the Chair of the All-Party Parliamentary Group on Preventing Sexual Violence and Conflict, which was set up by the then Foreign Secretary William Hagen uh, and, and Baroness Hellich, who sits in the other place. And it is a, 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 an APPG and an initiative that has been relaunched recently, and I understand that Stuart Peach is going to have a remit and a role in that as well. But it shows the significance of ensuring that women are included in the peace discussions, but also that we can push for justice, support and action against those perpetrators. Uh, at this point in the debate, there is very little else I can say that has, hasn't already been mentioned. I think it is important that this is the second significant debate that we have had in this House on Bosnia in about three weeks. And it is important that we continue to have that momentum and that pressure and ensure that Bosnians and Bosniaks and people of Western Balkans understand that this is an issue that we are going to continue to discuss, to debate, and to ensure that this House is united and that the government is listening, because the call for action is, is, is unanimous today. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, there is no doubt that we need to recognise the genocide that has gone on in the Western Balkans and in, in Bosnia, but it is also important to understand that Bosnia is perhaps the first domino that will fall, and if it falls, you will see action in Kosovo, you will see issues in Montenegro, and we will give up the ghost in the Western Balkans as a whole. It is the spread, it is the fear and intimidation that is being used to divide people. And of course, we have seen after Afghanistan that the West's response has been somewhat subdued. We need to use this as the opportunity for the West to regain its confidence, to be able to act where necessary, to be able to intervene where necessary. And Bosnia is a case in point, not because of our history, not just because of the extraordinary services of, the, of our soldiers and the UN peacekeeping forces, but because it is in our backyard, because it is, the, it is the playground of Russia, it is the playground of Serbia and Croatia, where they are trying to ignore international rules. And of course, so much has been said about Dodic. But we know what his playbook is. His playbook will be to use a small riot or some security issue, and areas will go into lockdown and police forces will arrive. We are already seeing it, as was mentioned in the Honourable Lady's speech from Melton and Rutland. You know, these are the tactics that will be used. We have to expect them, but we have to expect a robust response. So the only thing I want to point out is that we have two focuses, or we should have two focuses. The first is on the short term. We need a commitment today, and we need a commitment from the Foreign Secretary for a commitment to respond. If action is taken by Dodic, if there is intervention, we need to be able to say with confidence that we will react and encourage others to do so. The second is to ensure that sanctions and travel bans are implemented. Now, I don't know whether or not the UK will unilaterally put sanctions and travel bans on individuals, but we should have no fear or hesitation in, in publishing a list of those we, want to, uh, those we want to target. That should be absolutely no problem for us to be able to do. The third, of course, is reaffirming uh, territorial integrity. We have made this point last time during the urgent question, but we need it conclusively and we need it to be repeated again and again and again. The second perspective is the long term, and uh, the Honourable Member for Strangford mentioned this point, which is we need to reform Annex 4 of the Constitution to make sure that there is democratic accountability, to ensure that we can give that confidence to people um, in, the, in the region and in the area. And I think, as, as so many have said before them, that the Dayton Accord does need to be modernised and updated. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have Russia, we have China, who are meddling and disrupting in this region. You have Russia, who are arming police forces in the Republic of Serska. You have China who are trying to encourage a debt trap scenario in Bosnia. These are, just, these are two of the outside players, but we must also ensure that there is accountability towards Croatia and uh, Serbia, because, frankly, their actions must be held to account. And if they want to see action in, or they want to see entry into the EU or if they want to see entry into different organisations, we must hold them to account on this. Um, we have announced today about Sir Stuart Peach, and I think it is particularly welcome that we have done that. But I would ask if the Minister would, in, would perhaps inform the House of what his remit will be, when he will be reporting back on what's going on and what his, uh, his, his powers will be, because the announcement this morning is very broad. Mr Deputy Speaker, we have seen EU intransigence, we have seen NATO inaction, and we have seen US indifference. And I'm sorry to put it like that, but the United Kingdom seems to be the only country right now standing up and talking about this. We have the duty, as has been said by others, to lead. Let us lead and let us restore the confidence in the international rules-based order, but also support an extraordinary country.